turn uh, on one of the tank slides. And I was wondering, is it a tank? Is it something else? I didn't really know. This. The lights are really strong, like the lights now. Uh, so um, what I decided, I decided to slow down. And then in the loudspeaker, they said, uh, stop. Uh, uh, it's deadly force and going to be used. Uh, I heard that, and I understand the English, so I stopped right away. And the other car, they, he didn't understand, and he went right through them. He, all what I heard, I heard them shoot him. They shot him, um, and I felt like I, I killed him. I put him in front of me. He should, he should, that should have me. Should have been me. So then I, I saw them. I, I stopped there, watching them freeze. I'm just a freeze there. And um, I saw them drag him out of the car. And opening the, there is, uh, opening the car, there is like a kind of... Um, piece of fabric over the car, and they remove it, and it's just vegetables. Um, it was lettuce, lots of lettuce. And I wondered to myself, wow, uh, you, you could be killed for transferring lettuce in this country. And when, the, when it happened that, because I, I was working with Dar, actually, uh, he is the last person that I worked with there, there with him there, um, uh, my, uh, my friend was killed in my car because he thought he's me. So I decided that that's going to be my last day in Iraq. Um, um, now uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, let's, let's leave all this tragic stuff and go to um, what will happen. Who, who are the Iraqis? I'm going to prove you today that Iraqis actually exist. And uh, the Iraqis are human beings. I don't know how many of you have seen Iraqis except the soldiers, uh, but actually Iraqis are human beings. They are like you. They have families. Um, they have people. And actually they have families more than you, actually. My family is five brothers and five sisters. We are 11. I stopped counting how many uh, nieces and nephews that I have. I have, I think, 53. And all of them from one mother and one father. So. Um, for, for that, and uh, if, we are, if you want to talk a little bit about the sectarian violence, I think whatever the person that he broke the, uh, the mic, I think he's very smart. Because what happened that why he's Sunni, and I'm Shia, and he put Dar in the middle, the American guy. <laughs> um, uh, and I think that is a solution. What we do, we keep them in there, the Sunni try to shoot the Shia, and they will shoot the Americans because they're in the middle. The Shia try to shoot the Sunnis, they're shooting the Americans. The Americans in the middle. And the way they're going to fix it, it's by, they will shoot both, both sides. That's the, gonna, the way they're going to solve it. So they are saying that if they leave, we can't rebuild our country. Um, let's take an, uh, 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 just a survey of the people that, how many Iraqis that you know, they are engineers. Actually, all the Iraqis that you know, they are engineers. Me and Dride. <laughs> uh, he's a civilian engineer and a computer engineer. And um, the crossways that I, I, uh, I know Ride from, he was trying to make um, a smaller projects. And uh, he would go to like a bump in the street. And he would get all this friends of ours and he will try to fix it and we get a small budget for it and um, then he tried to do another one and his project failed because there's no budget. There is no budget to fix a... The Americans can't give him a million dollars to do it. So imagine that I, I called my family and I said, um, I'm, I'm really missing you. I have been here for about two years and a half and um, what do you think? Is it time to come back? Uh, and they said, what are you are coming back for? The same curb that was damaged when the Americans entered Iraq, it's still broken. The same, the same hospital that was bombed, it's still bombed. What are you going to come to do? What are you going to come uh, um, open a shop, uh, open a computer company? Uh, okay, how are you going to go to the company? Um, so I'm just transferring you the, uh, how the discussion that uh, my family will have with me if I want to, um, when I'm saying I want to go back to, uh, just to visit. So imagining with all of this situation, 
uh, I, I went outside yesterday. I was really interested about the people. They are pro-war people. I never saw pro-war people before because I live in Berkeley. <laughs> I was really interested. I went out to them and I wanted to talk to them. Um, and uh, I asked them a question. Are what they, do you think are we should humans do? humans like us too? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, they, they said, I, I asked them um, a question about what we should do in Iraq. They said we should stay in Iraq. And I said, but the word stay, in, as my bad English is, means that you are there and you stay. What about you are going to Iraq? I will buy you a ticket. You go to enjoy your time in Iraq. If you think it's great, just go there, stay there. Um, Uh, I will ensure you that my house that I left there in the area that the Americans have a, uh, a base right next to it, across the street, literally, they have 10 snipers just pointing at the houses there. Um, uh, I, will give him, I will give him the house to go stay there. Um, so when, when people saying, uh, I would love people to say their opinion when they, uh, when they know what they are talking about. I would love it. I really respect those soldiers that are the ones that they don't want to go there again. And they went out of the military after they notice what they are doing and what they should do. And I really, I really think they are heroes. Um, and I don't think that the ones that are sitting there and um, they are, uh, put, it, put it in the fact. I have a son, and I really believe in something, really believe in it, and I have the choice. Should my son get hurt, or I disbelieve in something? I will forget it. My son is more, more important. So um, I, I'm, I'm seeing these people, that these soldiers there, I met them there, I met them here, and I really respect that these soldiers are the same ones that they were there. They could have, if I met them there, I have a conversation with one of the soldiers yesterday. Um, I have actually a conversation with many of them, and I really enjoyed it. And I wish that I met them there. But many of them will say, no, you don't want to see us there. Because look at this contact. Um, these guys, they look like me now. And um, I'm talking to them now as a human to human. And if they saw me now there, back, if we, now both of us, we went back to the same situation, just we know each other, they will never shoot me. They are the same people. So they, they just realize that I'm a human, just like them, and actually speak the same language. Um, so I think if, if the language is a problem, uh, today I'm going to teach you all Arabic. That's what I'm going to do. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start uh, teaching you uh, the words that we should learn. First word you should learn is my name. My name is Salam, and it means peace. So this word, you should learn it. And if all the Americans learn this word, I think they will never, ever go to other people and steal their peace. Thank you so much. So I'd like to take some questions from the speaker slips from Brian at aliveinbaghdad.org. The question is, what would you say to people, this is for Salam and Gerard, what would you say to people who are concerned that the world only hears the voice of the wealthy or middle class and not the peasants or tribes, et cetera, et cetera, and I would add the working class? from Iraqi, uh, the, Ara the voices of Iraqis, what would you say to people who are concerned that the world only hears the voice of the wealthy Iraqis, middle class Iraqis, and not the peasant, quote, or quote, tribe, et cetera, et cetera? Um, go first. You? I, I thought it's a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> 
I wish if the world heard the voices of middle class and rich Iraqis, uh, that would be a good thing, in fact. I mean, the world and the U.S. media and the international media doesn't hear the voice of any Iraqis, rich or middle class or anyone. <laughs> they hear the voices of Iraqis who uh, uh, say what they want to hear. They hear the voices of Iraqis who say, uh, you know, stay in Iraq indefinitely, and this is a blank check for staying there. Please kill us and uh, stay in our country. And this is the only voice that makes it. So, I mean, that's a very advanced stage. Let's hope we'll be there one day. <laughs> um, and I think.